While the world is focused on the war in Ukraine, an even more important war is happening in the background that almost nobody is paying attention to. This is the semiconductor war. It's a war for technological dominance, a war that will decide who will win the next industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution. At the forefront are the US and its vassals, Taiwan, South Korea and the Netherlands. And on the other hand, we have China. And although it's early days, India has also thrown its hat into the ring. This war will decide who will be the next superpower. Will the US retain its global primacy and hegemony? Will China win? Is Russia an unlikely dark horse? And does India even have a chance? Please subscribe and let's find out. This video is sponsored by Generative AI Solutions. Here is their stock ticker on your screen, AICOF. Stay tuned until the end of this video to learn why this could be a strategic opportunity in the AI and cloud computing space. So semiconductors are chips that process digital information. They are in almost everything. Everyday devices like computers, phones, cars, home appliances, medical equipment, aircraft, and also in cutting edge military equipment. They are everywhere. The modern world would collapse without semiconductors. And we are in the infancy right now of the AI revolution. We are witnessing momentous changes in computing. The world is being transformed like never before. The generative AI industry is, is growing exponentially. Text generators like ChatGPT are here. We have image and art generators, the AIs, right? Uh, music generators and very soon video generation will also be possible. It may already be possible to some extent. So all of this is being powered by cutting edge semiconductor chips, mainly a class of chips called GPUs to be more specific. Semiconductor companies will sell over 600 billion worth of chips this year, $600 billion. By the end of this decade, the semiconductor industry is estimated to be worth more than $1.4 trillion. Now, Taiwan accounts for 63% of the global chip revenue. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC, alone accounts for 54% of global chip revenue. Taiwan's UMC accounts for 7%. South Korea accounts for 18% of global chip revenue. Its major manufacturer is Samsung. Global Foundries is essentially an American company which accounts for 7% of global chip revenue. China's Semiconductor Manufacturing Industrial International Corporation, SMIC, accounts for about 5% of global chip revenue. Revenue. So the top five companies are TSMC, Samsung, UMC, Global Foundries, and SMIC. And America's Intel is also in the mix right now. Chips are manufactured using photolithography machines. The Dutch company ASML is the largest supplier of these machines. So the semiconductor industry is dominated by Taiwan, South Korea, the US, Netherlands, and China. It's the US and three vassals on one side and China on the other side. Now, why do I say that South Korea, Taiwan and Netherlands are US vassals? So South Korea has been under US occupation since the early 1950s, since the Korean War. The US will say it's protection, but it is what it is. It's US occupation, right? They have lots of military bases, permanent military bases on Korean, South Korean soil. Taiwan is a nominally self-governing nation, but it's so because of US protection. China seeks to uh, reintegrate Taiwan with the mainland. So Taiwan is a US vassal. Now, what about the Netherlands? The US is estimated to currently have about 20 nuclear weapons on Dutch territory, obviously aimed at Russia. So when you host foreign nuclear weapons on your soil and allow them to be aimed at a third nation, you are a vassal of that nation. And, and, and Netherlands is also part of NATO, etc. So the Netherlands is also a US vassal. So you have these nations, the US and its vassals on one side and China on the other side. Now the US controls Taiwan and South Korea's semiconductor industry. How so, you will ask. So the US can block any takeover of a, of a Korean or Taiwanese company. It coerces them to hand over customer data. It opposes investments in China and other nations the US finds problematic, including Russia, obviously, these days, right? It makes these companies invest in US production and it makes them follow US export controls. So it's a US dominated grouping of the nation of nations on one side versus China on the other side. And this is where geopolitics 
comes in. Because as we know, as I've spoken about lots of times before, China is an aspiring superpower. It aspires to displace and replace the US as the sole superpower by about 2050. And it's facing massive demographic challenges right now. It has a dip declining TFR, total fertility rate. It has an aging population. The population is estimated to be the average age, median age of the population will be around 67, 68 by 2050. And the population will decline to about half of what it is by 2100. But that does not affect China today. China is the second largest economy. It's a near superpower. It's going to use all its might to try and achieve its goal of displacing the US from pole position by 2050 and reacquiring Taiwan ASAP as soon as possible. And the US won't sit back and let this happen. Enter the CHIPS Act. So the background is that US President Donald Trump hit China hard with a trade and tariff war during his tenure 2016 to 2020. Now the Biden administration took this to the next level last year, 2022, by imposing a set of sweeping restrictions aimed at disrupting China's manufacturing dominance in the, in the supply chain sector. So the US imposed restrictions on Chinese companies, research institutions and related groups, which effectively blocked their ability to obtain core US technologies. The US halted shipments of chips and chip making technology of potential use to China in its military buildup in and bid to dominate key industries. So for example, Nvidia and AMD and other such companies were restricted. They are currently restricted from supplying high end graphics processors and AI chips essential for high performance computing processes. So put simply, the US wants to cripple China's ability to produce advanced semiconductors. The US wants to throw a spanner in the works in China's bid to become the next superpower. And the repercussions and the re and restriction from these restrictions were rather immediate. So right after these restrictions were imposed, in less than a week, the Chinese China's chip companies took a hammering on the stock market. They lost almost $9 billion in market value, and this process is continuing. Meanwhile, TSMC, the Taiwanese chip manufacturer, manufacturing giant, is moving to the US. It's building currently, as we speak, a $40 billion chip fabrication facility in Arizona, which will be operational by next year, 2024. A second factory in Arizona is due to be up and running by 2026. Once this happens, Taiwan will be essentially expendable. It won't be useful anymore to the US, everything will have moved to the US, right? But the US won't allow China to just walk in and take Taiwan and grab the prize, TSMC. The US is prepared to blow up TSMC in Taiwan so that China never gets its hands on the technology. The US Congressman Seth Moulton recently said this. Very clear to the Chinese that if you invade Taiwan, we're going to blow up TSMC. I just throw that out not because that's necessarily the best strategy, but because it's an example <laughs> no, of no, 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 this no. out there. And of course, the, Thai the Taiwanese really don't like this idea. And they're blowing up TSMC. If you do that, you have a $2 trillion economic impact on the global economy within yeah. the first year, and a, you'd put manufacturing around the world at a standstill. I mean, it, this would be... This is a terrible idea. So this sounds insane, but the US may well be prepared to do that. Blow up TSMC if China tries invading Taiwan. So in response to the US CHIPS Act, China has retaliated. How so? China has retaliated by imposing export controls on gallium and germanium, two crucial metals needed for chip manufacturing. China accounts for 98% of global gallium production and about 67% of the germanium production. To put this in context, in 2021, the US imported over 50% of the gallium and germanium it used from China. Gallium, for example, is used in modern military AESA radars, 5G base stations, chargers, and other power modules. And germanium is used in fiber optics, infrared optics, solar cells, LEDs, etc., etc. So this could hit the U.S. defense industry and other industries badly. Now, what about Russia? So Russia is currently circumventing U.S. sanctions by procuring chips from Turkey, from the UAE, and also from Hong Kong, which obviously is happening with Chinese approval. Hong Kong, right? And Russia has formulated a chip replacement plan or strategy. Russia is going to invest about 3.2 trillion rubles, which works out to about $35 billion US dollars 
uh, it's going to invest this money in developing its own chip manufacturing industry and and making it a significant uh, force by about 2030. Now, what about India? So India has launched the India Semiconductor Mission. What's the aim of this mission? It aims to build a semiconductor ecosystem to enable India's emergence as a global hub for electronics manufacturing and design. So India's first semiconductor production facility is expected to go up in the western state of Gujarat and production is slated to start next year. But it's still very early days for India. India will need the cooperation of nations like the US, Taiwan, South Korea, the Netherlands, even Japan to make this mission, the semiconductor mission, a success. If done right, India could become a major semiconductor manufacturer by the end of this decade, but of this decade, but lots of things will have to go right for that. And there are many uncertainties along the way. One example is right before us. China is not a friendly nation as far as India is concerned. And China could hit India with export controls on gallium and germanium. See, China doesn't see doesn't want to see India rise. India is the only nation in Asia that can challenge China, counterbalance China, and possibly surpass China. So China will not let this happen. It will do its best to impede India's progress. So China could hit India with export controls on gallium and germanium. So overall, it's a long way to go for India. There are lots of uncertainties and obstacles and problems along the way. So that is the semiconductor war that's happening right now as we speak. It's not visible, but it's happening and it's big. And the outcome of this war is uncertain because the world is currently up for grabs. Uh, we have this new multipolar global order that's, that order that's emerging and lots of things are going in various directions. A new AI powered, AI enabled superpower could emerge by the time this decade is out. So that's the news update part of this video. Now I wanna tell you about today's sponsor that is tied directly to this demand for AI computing right now. This company is called Generative AI Solutions. Here is the stock ticker on your screen, AICOF. So if you're an investor, you need to pay attention to what's happening in artificial intelligence. AI is changing everything from medicine to education, to stock markets, to defense, to real estate, and everything in between. And that's why the US and China are fighting over Taiwan right now, because it makes the cutting edge chips needed for supercomputing and AI. And that's why they are engaged in this intense tug of war, this trade and tariff and, and restrictions and sanctions war that, that we see, that we just spoke of about, right? Spoke about. Now, think of it this way. Back during the, the California gold rush, the biggest winner was Levi Strauss, who made the supplies for the gold miners. So during a gold rush, the biggest winners are those who supply the picks and shovels and supplies. And that's exactly what this company does, Generative AI Solutions. This company makes the computing power for AI companies to build on top of. So they supply the computing power that the AI companies can use to build appliances on top of. Let's put another way. We know about Amazon Web Services, AWS. AWS is, is, is estimated to be a $1 trillion part of Amazon's business. So if Amazon Web Services was a standalone company, it would be worth approximately a $1 trillion. It's enormous. So AWS provides on-demand cloud computing platforms to individuals and companies and even to governments. And that's where generative AI solutions comes in. They've built a proprietary, proprietary cloud service for AI called MAI Cloud. It's a culmination of advanced computing capabilities integrated seamlessly into a cloud-based solution. So it enables companies to not have to build their super expensive, enormous server farms to run their AI business. You need enormous amounts of computing to, to create AI and, and run AI businesses. So MAI Cloud takes a huge load off their backs. They don't have to worry anymore about the computing power. They can focus on building their AI business. So just like companies use AWS, Amazon Web Services to power their websites, Generative AI Solutions now lets companies leverage their proprietary cloud, cloud service to run AI businesses. So AI is taking over. It's here to stay. It's not even really started. We are in the infancy of the AI revolution. Every industry you can think of is in the process of pivoting to AI, to artificial intelligence. The shares of NVIDIA have skyrocketed this year. The share price of AMD 
has shot up this year. Why do you think this is happening? It's because of AI. The demand for these chips is off the charts. And this company I'm telling you about, Generative AI Solutions, is using state-of-the-art NVIDIA H100 graphics processing units, GPUs, in their cloud processing. So companies no longer have to invest huge sums of money into building AI applications. It's now way more affordable. So in short, without such a service, nothing can work. Now, another reason why I'm bullish on this company is that Generative AI Solutions is like a venture fund for AI solutions. They have been acquiring certain AI companies. They have been making strategic acquisitions in promising AI companies. So it's like owning an AI fund or ETF because you get exposure to several businesses at one time. One of the best acquisitions they made is a company called Remits. Remits is a leading provider of automated revenue billing services for medical billing and they obviously use AI to do it. So Remits is able to identify and submit billing claims that would otherwise go uncollected and they are using AI to do this. So they are maximizing profits for the healthcare professionals and that's just one example. So this industry is growing exponentially right now. It makes sense to invest a portion of one's portfolio into AI. And the share price is incredibly cheap right now. As of this recording, it's trading at just 83 cents a share. That's down 91% this year, but over the last six months, it's up above over 400%. Once again, here's the stock ticker on your screen, AICOF. So go ahead and do your own research on this company. Do your own due diligence. Look at their recent acquisitions. Look at how the AI market is exploding right now. And I think you will see how this company has huge upside potential. Again, do your own research on this. You can find the link to the website in the description below as well as their stock ticker. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon.